Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. I hope you're enjoying the Harmonica Party and the other content that we post on our channel. Now you can become part of the show for the price of a cheap cup of coffee. For three bucks a month, you can help bring the blues and the stories to you. Check out our Patreon page and join us for exclusive content, early releases of episodes, and some rewards specifically for our Patreon friends. Thanks for helping us keep the blues alive. My name is Mark Hummel and this is Mark Hummel's Harmonica Party and we have my good friend and drummer extraordinaire June Kaur sitting here and uh, we have a whole lot of stories we're going to get into with June. He's played with a, an amazing array of great musicians over his career and uh, you've been You've been nominated for a Blues Award this year, is that right? Yeah, this year. My the Blues, seventh. is it the seventh? <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, it's about time you won. Yeah. Not up to me. Well, but anyway, yeah. I'm glad you've been nominated oh, that yeah. many times. Man, that's, that's awesome. That's an honor. Yeah. That's an honor. First, I want to kind of get into your, your past history because you moved out from Cleveland, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Cleveland is where you started playing drums. You were pretty young when you started, right? Yeah, well, I started when I was 17, started playing when I right. was 17, but I, it, it came pretty quick, you know. And you got the gig, as I recall, was, was Robert Jr. Lockwood and... Yeah. Johnny, the very first gig or not? Well, no, no. I was playing around town. I was playing, you know, and uh, I played with this guy. I can't remember his name. He was a piano player, big guy. And um, he heard me practicing in the in the basement. He stopped and knocked on my door and asked my mom, you know, who's that playing drums? And and uh, and she said, ah, it's my, you know, it's my baby and blah, blah, blah. So I came upstairs. I met him and he asked me if I wanted to work, you know, for, for money. And I was like, Good, sure. And uh, I was 17, still, I had just started playing. And um, so he asked my mom if I could play, you know. She said, well, he grown, you know, he can do what he want. So I started playing uh, duo gigs, just me and him, in this club in downtown Cleveland. But I, because I was underage, the bartender who was really cute, you know, right. um, um, was looking after me and taking, you know, taking care of me and, you know, making sure I wasn't drinking and, you know, doing whatever right so yeah right. So, and then how did you how, how long was it before you got the robert jr gig well it was another two years i believe um i was playing around town with different uh like funk bands and uh, a little bit of jazz and <clears throat> and things i was trying to learn you know as i was going and it, it was a lot to do you know but i mean i had nothing else to do and so i was really into learning and I played with this guy named Eddie Backus, uh, who was an organ player, blind organ player. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, somehow I got turned on to him, and so I would go pick him up, and we'd carry a big Leslie in a big organ right. down these long stairs. Fun, just me and him, you know. But he <laughs> he knew he knew the place so well, you know. Yeah, and we'd get it down there, and you know, stuff it in the trunk, and the trunk was open, and everything. Jeez. And um, and then aren't you glad you don't play organ? Wow! <laughs> if, if I had it to do it B3, again, I'd play the yeah. spoons or something. Yeah, right. Know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's even worse than drums. Yeah. Well, yeah. he um, well drums is great, but but he uh, he would tell me how to get to the gigs. You know. Wow. Yeah, we'd go and he'd yeah. be doing this, and I go, yeah. well, Hoppy goes, I'll tell you when to turn. He goes, at the next light. That's crazy. Turn left, you know, and but he'd tell me how to get to every yeah. single gig we were. I used to hear about that about Sam Myers doing. too. Yeah, yeah somehow. He'd do that. Yeah. They know. You yeah, know? that's crazy. But he turned me on to. Uh, now was he jazz? He was uh, blues, funk, and soul, a uh, little bit of jazz, um, mm -hmm. but he played a lot of organ, um, like Jimmy Smith, Jimmy McGriff, you know, like right. really, you know, cool, just way cool stuff Yeah, that I was just, um, just learning and getting into. Mm -hmm. And uh, him and Robert were friends, and Robert needed a drummer, and uh, Eddie said, hey, you know, if you don't use this guy, I'll never speak to you again. Of course, he was kidding. Right. And Robert calls me up and he says, Junior, my name's Robert Junior Lockwood. Do you know who I am? I'm going, no. 
Because <laughs> I've never heard of him before. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he says, well, uh, I'm a guitar player, and I'm going on the road, and I need a drummer in two days, you know. It's a week gig in Buffalo, New York at the Brass Rail. And um, I said, well, okay, well, let me call you back. He goes, okay, well, you call Eddie and make sure, you know, everything's cool, and then call me back. So I called Eddie. I said, hey, Eddie. He said, do it. Click. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I called Robert back, and I said, well, okay. So he said, come over to the house and um, get some albums and, you know, listen to them, and, and, uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll go. So no rehearsal, no nothing. I, I, got, I went over and met him, and I'm thinking, ah, this is old guy, you know. I don't know about this. And so I got the albums. It was uh, Does 12 and um, a couple other albums. And so I went home and I put them on the stereo and I was like, nah, oh, <laughs> I hate this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But oh, I, I was thinking, you know, I, I'll just do this one week and get some money and I'll never do this again because wow. I'm not digging it, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was the start of of uh, playing with Robert. Two days later, we were in the van, headed to Buffalo. Um, we get to Buffalo, and I'm thinking, well, Johnny Shines was in the van. Oh, Johnny Shines was, was in the van, in the van okay. too, and I didn't know either of them, yeah. you know? So I'm just kind of, you know, this kid going, oh, man, you know? And Who are um, these old guys? Yeah, basically, yeah. with the whole man noises and things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. um, but the thing, thing was, they weren't, that old back then, I was just True. that much well, younger yeah. than they yeah. were. Yeah, and so we get to uh, we get to the gig, and uh, the night comes. We're playing. Of course, I had to room with with Robert. Uh, really? Yeah, I was. Wow. Uh, I was. Uh, I was not actually. I wasn't quite. I was like eighteen, maybe. Uh huh. And uh, so anyway, I roomed with uh, Robert and Johnny. It was like a suite, you know. Yeah. And um. So we uh, uh, go to the gig, start the gig. They're playing, you know, this great old blues stuff. But I didn't know anything about it, so I'm putting on my funk <laughs> drums. I try a little jazz stuff, you know. And it's not working, and people, yeah. you know, kind of leaving and oh looking, my God. you know, disgusted. And yeah. So we got fired that night. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we got fired. And um, Robert told the club owner, and in fact, I was sitting there in the club owner as well, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Lockwood, uh, this is not what I expected, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to let you guys go. So, Robert said, well, i tell you what you do. You open the club, let us practice tomorrow, you know, a couple hours, whatever, and then we'll play tomorrow night, and if you still don't like it, you know, you just pay us for the one night, and we'll be on our way. Wow. So, we go in the club the next day in this narrow, long broom closet, me, Robert, and Johnny, and within a matter of maybe 15 minutes, I'm going to say, 20 minutes at the very most, um, they told me, uh, show, taught me five different shuffles. He said, you'll use these for the rest of your life. Wow. And um, and they, it was so simple to me because I was used to playing, you know, complex, you know, complex yeah. stuff, yeah. you know. I started, you know, getting into Latin, you know, right. rhythms and things, right. you know. And so it was so simple, but I said, okay, you know. And um, we went that night and just tore the place down. Wow. Sold out. We Pour it down. Wow. And finish that whole week engagement. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Uh, and that was the start of me yeah. playing uh, with Robert and Johnny and learning about the blues. Right. Yeah. And for people that don't know it uh, out there, Robert Jr. Lockwood was the, was pretty much the, he was the stepson of Robert Johnson, who everyone knows. And then he was also <laughs> the studio guitar player at Chess Records and played on. The majority of uh, uh, Lil Walter, yeah. Sonny Boy Williamson, I yeah. uh, played with Muddy Waters, mm -hmm. uh, um, Eddie Boyd, so many, so many other Chicago greats, and was really kind of the guy that that wrote the book on backing a blues harmonica, yeah, pretty right, much. Right, right, yeah, exactly. and then Johnny Shines was also somebody that traveled with uh, Robert Johnson in in his younger days and was a tremendous country blues guitar player and singer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And big, so, big. so these guys, they, they got together, and they, you guys had some Grammy Award-winning albums, as I recall. They, then, right? The first album I did with them called Hanging On uh, won uh, Handy Award. Handy Award, yeah. okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. And maybe Grammy nominee. It might have been might Grammy have been, nominee. Yeah. Grammy yeah. At nominee. that time, yeah. I really didn't know much of mm -hmm. <laughs> anything, you know. But um, how long were you with those guys? Um, eight years. Uh, and traveling all over the world or all over the country or what? Uh, all over the country. All yeah. the country. Yeah, I I'd never. Canada? Did you guys go up to Canada? I went to Canada yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, and a lot here in the States. Um, yeah, and I never. Uh, I was supposed to do that um, album in J live in Japan. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah. But Bila was sick, and so Robert said, hey, you know, I, I think you might have a chance to come and do this. And <laughs> it turns out, you know, Bilo. You know, did the album? Yeah, he got. Okay, he so that was that was where the aces back then. Mm -hmm, right. Okay. Right, right. right. All right. That's a great album. Yeah. Yeah. I That's know, a wonderful I know. album. I know. And um, the other thing I, you mentioned was uh, about Willie Dixon doing some gigs with you guys and 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 him instructing you on how to play yeah. with an upright. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We first went to uh, played the I think it was the first Delta Mississippi Blues Festival. Right. Um. And so we're all on the bus. It was me, of course, Robert Johnny, Willie Dixon, Albert Collins, his whole band. And we're on the bus and everybody's like real nice and, you know, cordial. And, you know, I'm like this young guy. I don't know anybody, you know. Right. I mean, I'm just odd man out. You right. know? So we do the gig months later, you know, we're uh, doing another tour. Willie's on this, uh, on two or three of the gigs. And so Willie's like, hey, you know, I know you. I know because Robert introduced me. Willie, how you doing? He goes, ah, yeah, I heard about you. I heard about you. And I'm like, okay, I don't know, you know, but okay. And um, we play a couple tunes. He goes, yeah, mm-hmm. He goes, look, this is what you do. When I do this, you can do that. And, uh, and then he said, you know, when I start this, you know, you can think like this and you can finish this or yeah. or you notice when you start a builder field then I know what's going on and I do this that and the other and and so I learned uh, um, kind of the conversations yeah the music. conversation yeah, yeah. and yeah. it was so cool man because yeah. he was like but to watch him how big he was mm -hmm. you know because I'm you know I mean I was still the same he size, made the base look thin. small his hands <laughs> man there's a picture of yeah. me and him where he's yeah. got his Hands, the, his palm is back here. Right, 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 <laughs> and right. His fingers are up here. Jeez, you know, like it's, yeah. it's covered my whole yeah, head. You know, yeah. He was, he was that big, but he was a sweetheart of a guy, man. Yeah. Um, and all three of those guys went way back to the yeah forties. Probably. Oh, I'd or, hear all the if stories. Not, if not the fifty, yeah, yeah, if not the fifties. I'd yeah. hear all these stories. Yeah. I did, of course, I didn't know because I was right. Uh, you I know. know. Kid, and I That's the thing you kind of kick yourself about. Oh you man! Know? Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. You lasted with him for eight years, and then, and then eventually, <coughs> what made you move out to California? I actually moved to New York first for oh, two okay. years. We had a residency there. All and right. Several clubs we'd play. Um, one month on, a month off, month on, month off, you know, and they kept coming home, but I didn't want to come home. So, so that was with Robert and Johnny? Robert and Johnny, yeah. Okay. So I stayed in New York. Um, oh, really? Wow. For, for the, the length of that. And then that ended, and I loved New York so much, I was just going to stay there, you know. Yeah. But my, my stepdad at the time was, you know, had cancer and he was not doing well. So I, w I went back to Cleveland for a couple of years. I just didn't want to be there anymore. So right. I came out to California and, and started looking for work. But Robert gave me the, these right. numbers of people right. to, to uh, contact. It, it was you, Bird Hill. Right. And, um, you know, he called these numbers and, and tell them, you know, that uh, I, I recommended you and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. Let me know if this <laughs> go is Go ahead, go possible. ahead. You can embarrass me. I don't mind. So I... <laughs> First, see, uh, uh, <laughs> I meet Bert, and I said, hey, Bert, you know, my name's June Core. I just moved here from Cleveland. He was like, uh-huh. And I said, uh, Robert Jr. Lockwood gave me a number. He goes, who? I said, Robert Jr. Lockwood. He goes, yeah. And he and walked away. Yeah. Well, like I said, it was like somebody coming up and going, you know, God just spoke to me. And said, <laughs> I didn't I didn't get he said that. To, <laughs> yeah, right. He told me said to, to give you me my number. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't get that. And then, of course, I met you at the JJ's. And so you you guys had just finished a blister and said it was great. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And uh, the thing was, I didn't know anybody. And 
didn't have much transportation, but I made my way to these places. So I get there and I'm waiting outside and then you come out and you're all sweaty and and um and I say, Hey, um, Mark, Mark Hummel, you said, Yeah? I said, uh, hey, you know, I just I just moved here from Cleveland. And you goes, Okay. And uh, I said, and you was like doing your shirt you all sweaty. I vaguely remember this. <laughs> and, I, and I said, Well, Robert Jr. Lockwood um gave me a number and he said to look you up when I got here. You he said, Who? I said, Robert Jr. He said, Robert Jr. Lockwood. I said, yeah, and then you just turned around and walked off. <laughs> That's how you do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I turned around uh -huh. and walked off. Sure and I'm he thinking, did. Did these guys hate Robert or what? You know, what is, what is this? No, we're in awe of Robert. <laughs> I was thinking like, you we know. We didn't think it was real. That's the problem. I, I thought, you know, it was like me saying some convict. You know, right. <laughs> like Charles Manson told me to look yeah. you up. Charles Manson said to look you up, and uh, yeah, you, you know. might have a, an extra ice pick around. <laughs> well, that was how I took because I didn't right. know, you know. Right, that's funny. And um, and then I got into this. Finally, uh, money was kind of getting tight, and I I I got this gig with this guy Art Doherty. Oh, right, Remember right. Art? Sure <laughs> in the yes. flying saucers. Right, right, right. So we're playing this. Give club. you your matching drum set, and matching suit. <laughs> yeah, I had to play yeah, his. Right kit exactly so we play a gig and i wasn't quite used to the west coast style right you know it's a little it's, swing there's a slight difference we're at a club plan and i was talking about the difference between west, west coast, coast and, and east coast, yeah, east coast swing, yeah, right, yeah that right. little little slight thing right and so i was noticing that something was just a little bit off you know but i was starting to figure it out so we finished the night but it went well and the club owner friend we're talking, and the guy, you know, didn't, you know, it was it was a racial talk. Wow, you know? really? And, yeah, wow. and the guy was like, hey, you know, if this guy's going to be in here tomorrow, I'm not coming back, you know, and I'm going to just, you know, like, tell people, don't don't go. Is this is what the club owner said? A friend, the club owner's friend. Oh. And so he didn't know that I heard this, so he went directly to Art and said, hey, if that guy's with you tomorrow, don't bother coming back. Wow. And so Art came to me, who also didn't know that I heard what, you know, was transpired, said, um, hey, you know what, you're not quite cutting it, so I'm going to have to let you go, so, you know, you, you know, don't don't bother showing up tomorrow. <laughs> so he fired me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Figuring out what right. the difference was, you know, between East Coast and West Coast Wing. Fast forward up to, like, the Soul Drivers and all of that, which was a great, great run. No, that was that was after you. That was after me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Soul, Soul drivers, drivers were after. To, to so yeah, we yeah, played yeah. together. I want to say we played together from. I think it might have been eighty six to eighty eight. Yeah, it was two years. Just yeah. over two years. Yeah, a little over two years. And then I rehired. I started reworking with you again in yeah. ninety. I remember. Mm -hmm. And right. it's kind of been off and on ever since then. Yeah, really. yeah, 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 yeah. All good. Yeah. Though. All good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I remember when you joined. Jimmy Bot had just quit to, to join the to, mighty flyers right that's right and i had like two weeks to find a drummer yeah. to go on my first <laughs> european tour Dude. i think i think i might have called you up because you, you had did. given me your number I and i called you up and time. said <laughs> i don't remember I, I don't do. remember I'm but sorry. i just remember yeah you know that you yeah, ended up you, you ended up in the band immediately at that point and yeah and stayed with us till '88. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I pretty much burned you out on the road. That's what I remember. Well, we were we were on we the were road on the road big time. Finland and big Sweden time. And well, no, I mean just all the U.S. Tours all the U.S. stuff was yeah. No, that was I mean you know I remember too. the one with Dave told me was that was like a two, <laughs> 12 week tour or something. No, it was ridiculous. We did <laughs> we did a bunch of really long tours. That was a twelve week. Yeah. Tour, yeah. And I remember at the end of that I could just see I could see the look on your face and I could see you were exhausted. And I, <laughs> I and I think I, somehow, you know, you said something like, Well, I think I'm done for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean I've been doing this long enough by that time that I said, you know, I, I, I kind of realized when people had had their fill of, you know, how much road work you can do. But I mean, you know, I think at that point you had been on the road an awful lot. Yeah. I think you had been on the road, like, before you moved to the Bay Area, did, hadn't you been on the road with these other bands that were, yeah. like, traveling all over? So I was the Drifters. In, yeah, that's one, of, one of the, right, right, right. the singers the Drifters for the Drifters. Drifters offshoot band. Yeah, but one, one of the singers was, had, you know, was in the band, in the Drifters, and, and uh, so I toured with them for, 
some time. Uh, and then uh, I was stuck on the road for a year. I remember that. I remember you told me about this. In this band called Blue Money. Right. And you guys ended up in some town in Colorado or something, and nobody had any money. And it was there was just several times where we, we wound up with no money. Yeah. yeah that was that was uh, that was a test. You went from my band into the Soul Drivers with Andy Santana yeah, and Mike right, Shermer. Right. You got you got in Little Charlie. What, what, what year was did you make? Uh, the move to Charlie's band. It was after '94. '94, okay, yeah, something like that. But I had played uh, with, with Laverne Baker for right, and that was the other oh, person well, I yeah. wanted to ask you about was Laverne and, and the story oh, yeah. with her. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now you did a ton of gigs with her. Yeah. And Laverne Baker, for those who don't know, is the gal that had a lot of R&B hits like Tweedly D and Jim and, Dandy, uh, to, Jim the Dandy yeah. to the Rescue. I Cried a Tear. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Just a <laughs> fabulous, fabulous yeah. album. Right. Really, right. her and Ruth Brown were kind of the two big sellers on Atlantic Records. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. And she had a lot of hits that were covered by a lot of different people. You're right. Yeah. And a lot of stories. About and a, a lot of stories being about being ripped off. Yeah, about yeah. being ripped yeah. off and. Jackie Wilson, she got Jackie Wilson her start. You know, mm -hmm. he was like a, a a lover. Wow! And um, and she heard him sing. He would sing to her, and she just thought it was, which of course we all do. Right. And then she took him to a record company, and they heard him sing and and signed him. Wow! Yeah, but she was just a fabulous vocalist and person and person. Yeah, to me yeah. anyway. I don't right. I don't know her right. beyond right. outside of that, but. She was great. She yeah. Was, yeah, she was yeah. sweet out of a woman. That's awesome. Feisty. Yeah. So <laughs> so you played with Charlie after you were playing with her? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after uh, that, then was um, Little Charlie and the Night Cats uh, when Doby Strange quit right. playing. And I played with them for about five and a half years. Wow. Okay. Like that. Yeah. 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 Great. Uh, what a band, man. Yeah. Wow. They taught me. So, man, they taught me so much about um, showmanship and professionalism. Right. You know, if there was one person in the audience, they were still giving it they all. Right, you know? right. And, yeah. You know? And they would put out, if there was one person, they would sing to that one person. Yeah. And then after that, did you end up with Muscle White? Well, I played with Terry Hank for a little bit. Oh, okay. All after right. that. Um, because, you know, once you when you're on the road, a lot, and we were on the road. You mean with Charlie? <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah. With, with the with the right. night cats. We were right. on the road, man. I'd buy. Here's an example. I'd buy something, order something, and they come in the boxes. But I got to leave the next day, so I just stuff it in my little cottage. Leave for tour. You know, five weeks, six weeks later, I come home, and open my door, and there's these boxes sitting there. And I'm looking around, going, "What? What the?" <laughs> <laughs> what's what's going on? Look at me hand the door to see if anybody's in my house, you right? Know? And I don't remember where these came from. Yeah, that's weird. And then I slowly go, oh wait a minute, these came just before I left. Yeah, but I was only home what for is two it? days. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. What is it? And that's Those how much that's how much we were on the road. Right. Then and then, um, in between that time, we did the Shadow of the Blues. Right. And then, as long as I have you with John Hammond, which was very, oh, yeah. very, very cool. Who was also yeah. another. Right. I, I love playing with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy, man. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you're on two albums with those guys? Yeah. Okay. Um, Shadow of the Blues and with them, and then um, as long as I have you with them with John Hammond. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, after no, no. Ford, after uh, all of that, then I, I quit the Nightcats, and then um, several months later, uh, Charlie Musselwhite was inquiring about me, you know, and right, and so somebody hooked him up with me, and that's I joined this band, and I've been in this band now for fifteen years. That's incredible! Wow, that's a long run. It's it is a good ride, though. Yeah. You know? Well, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'd be. We um, uh, became. And has Randy been in there the whole time? He's no. been in there off and on a lot of it. Off and uh, um, he yeah. was he was he got in there. Randy Bermuda <laughs> after yeah. uh, the last bass player, Chicago bass player, um, was no longer in, and then Randy 
joined, right. and then Randy left to go to the T-Birds. That's right. He was with the T-Birds for like seven years mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. And then he he came back after a while. Right. Um, yeah, but but those years meant some sometimes we'd be at the airport like seven six seven o'clock in the morning. Right. And uh, uh, Charlie and I would just be sitting there, you know, just dr just tired as yeah is you know as everything, and um. I'd look over and look around, and I'd see something really odd and kind of funny. And before I could tell Charlie, hey, do you see that? He would have seen it, and now we just look at it, and we'd just be laughing like That's great. two school kids. That's great, yeah. <clears throat> for, yeah. For a long, I mean, yeah. tears, you know, the well, whole Both of you bit. guys have great senses of humor. And Henry no goes, Oh, I shouldn't. Right. <laughs> Henry goes, yeah, 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 careful. <laughs> careful. He would there. just say, okay, yeah. guys, knock it off, right. knock it off, because people would start to look. Right. That is, uh, they Charlie's don't know got, what we're laughing at. Yeah, he's at, got you know? a very juvenile sense of humor. <laughs> I sure. love that about uh, I do, Charlie too. Man. No, it's, I love it, too. <clears throat> yeah. I do. He cracks me up, man. Yeah, 15 years later, here I am. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. But, but you know, from the way I started, had anybody told me I would come to love the blues and still be doing this, you know, these many years later, I would just I'd laugh and just go, you no way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Well, nope. it's funny. I mean, you know, to me, blues is something that you really kind of grow into. I mean, you know, once you once you start to grasp what it's really about and the depth that it's got mm -hmm. and the history it's got, you know, I mean, the fact that you got to play with those, you know, those those older guys in the very beginning, that is so heavy. Oh, because I of mean, them. Because Robert, yeah. Robert and Johnny Shines were just... Those guys were really the fathers of, you know, so much. <laughs> they were. Like yeah. like James Cotton come to town and yeah. uh, I met him and played with him through uh, Robert. B.B. King would come to town right. and come over his house. Yeah. and uh, he got lessons from Robert. But they yeah. all uh, said, called him Pop, you know. Yeah. Pops, yeah. you know, yeah. Papa, you know. And and I, I knew who B.B. King was because he was, you know, right. famous. famous. So yeah. I'm starting to go, wow, this is... This is, you know, this, this is guy's bigger way than I cool, thought. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and then before we did that Hanging On album, yeah, um, uh, I met. Uh, we were uh, my first time out to the West Coast on tour with Robert and Johnny, and um, uh, Bob Dylan was interested in producing the album. Wow. So he'd send the scouts out. Now we we had like a month and you know a few days. Tour, you know, all up and uh -huh. down the West Coast, and so he kept sending the scouts out to see, you know, you know about, about the band, you know, the how's the band and how's Robert and Johnny, <clears throat> and they liked the band, they loved Robert and Johnny, but not together. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which I wow. I, I can't fathom. That's strange. To this man. day. That's so strange. Um, and so, uh, we, the last night of the tour, we were in uh, Santa. Barbara or right. something. Yeah. And um, we're in a, in a suite. Me, uh, Jimmy Lay, who's a piano player, uh, Gino Schwartz, um, Robert and Johnny. And mm -hmm. so it was this big round suite. You know, I'm, of course, uh, this is all new to me. I, you know. Right. And um, so Robert said, you know, Junior, I'm, you know, we got to have a meeting. Uh, Mr. Bob Dylan's coming on. We got to have a meeting. And so just stay in your room, you know, and I'll let you know, you know, when it's to come out. So me and uh, Jimmy Lay um, played cards in the room. And so Jimmy was like, cool guy, you know, he's going to take advantage of this young kid. So he had these dark shades on and we're playing poker. <clears throat> and I kept winning his money, you know, and he was getting frustrated, you know, he was, you know, going, cussing up, storm, you know. And, and, and then finally he starts laughing. He goes, how the... How the hell are you doing this? And I started laughing. I I said, well, you know, those shades reflect all, <laughs> <laughs> all your cards. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I can that's see all so your cards in, this, in your glasses. You might as well have had a mirror on your sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. And so he just that's died. Funny. We both oh, died great. laughing. That is so but funny. But meanwhile, I'm like 55 bucks up, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And uh, I hear laughing out in the hallway. And I hear Robert and Johnny in commotion and his, and his other, hey, hey, Robert, Robert, you know. And I'm like, well, what's going on? But I was still a cat. I think I was like 19, maybe. Right. And so I peek the door open and I see Robert and Johnny and, and this guy, uh, you know, tussling in the front room. And so I, I 
snuck out and I snuck behind Bob and jumped on his back and grabbed him to the game. And we were just laughing like kids, man. And Robert and Johnny could hardly That's say great. anything. And Robert was trying to tell me to let him up, let him. But he was, he was like laughing so hard. He got, let, do, let, let him. And Johnny was just over there dying. Anyway, eventually. We uh, I we got up and we were just all laughing about that. So you tackled Bob Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the only person I know that ever tackled Bob Dylan. <laughs> well, he did. I snuck up on him too. <laughs> um, That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a good time, and um, yeah. So then uh, he decided not to do it. But Rounder Records, I don't. Is Rounder Records yeah, still around? They're still around. Yep. They decided to do the album. That was hanging on? Yeah. Yeah. Hanging on. And um, we went in the first day and we were loading equipment in and Robert had this big amp uh, carrying it with uh, Gene, Gino. And the amp fell on these graded stairs and broke his finger. Oh know, my God. And he went into shock. Oh. And he just, you know, went into shock yeah. and he grabbed his finger and he was walking out in the middle of the street. And I didn't know what was going on, but the, the sax player ran out and grabbed him and pulled him back. So he took him to the hospital. Next day, he comes back to the studio, played that whole album without using Unbelievable. His finger. Yeah, he used every other. That is unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know. This, he had a pen, you know, a couple pens, yeah. and rods or whatever in his finger, and then, you know, tape, but he, he managed to play around it. That and I just, crazy. Th I was like, man, wow. I, I thought we were going to have to either not do it or... No kidding. Or put it off. Something, yeah, yeah you know. Right. And uh, that album turned out that... That was my first with them, and that's probably my only one with them. But they won at the... Um, what was the... Hand WC Handy, Handy Awards. Awards. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I remember yeah. those. No, that, that album definitely was very, very well... I think it what did was nominated for a Grammy, as I recall. It might have been. I think so. It I'll, I'll check. Yeah. The B side of that was just him and Johnny, where they sound right. like 10 guitar That's players. incredible stuff. Oh, man. Oh, that was incredible. Robert used to stuff. laugh and go, Junior, yeah. what do you want to hear? And I'd say, you know, you know, yeah, and he'd just start guys, laughing. Just because those guys were such tremendous blues guitar players. That was and they just had, they, they had that simpatico thing. Yeah, they did. Well, they, they knew. Did. They yeah, just they knew. just had the simpatico thing of how to play together with another guitar. Every, and so many guitar players don't know how to do that. It's a it's a it's, it's, it's a, a rarity becoming yeah. a lost start. Mm -hmm. But anytime he'd ask me what I wanted to hear, he'd laugh because he knew that I wanted to hear them do their just the two of the them. The two of them do yeah. their thing because yeah. it, yeah. it was just it just yeah. mesmerizing. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Well, June, thank you. It's always been a pleasure to yeah, know you, man. man. It's, it's, You've been a great guy to, to know, and, and uh, Back at you, I always love working with you. Back at you, brother. Thank you. You deserve all the accolades you've gotten. Believe me, man. All you really accolades. do. <laughs> accolades. <laughs> yeah, all the al All the altoids. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's right. Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. I hope you're enjoying the Harmonica Party and the other content that we post on our channel. Now you can become part of the show for the price of a cheap cup of coffee. For three bucks a month, you can help bring the blues and the stories to you.